Oh, I hope this game is awesome. What kind of character am I going to make? I have no idea. I have no idea. None. Hey, James Bacon. Okay. <clears throat> Press any key to play. Ooh. New game. Very challenging mode for those who want to test their skills in numerous turn-based battles. More details. Okay. Let's do it. Who am I voicing in this game? Two characters. <laughs> we woke up in a different world, where the Cold War ended along with the Vietnam carnage. All because of the dome. The dome. The dome. A territory full of anomalous artifacts, phenomena, and organisms. We still don't know what it is. An alien city? Some kind of a testing ground or storage? Whatever it is, no living thing trapped under the dome can escape it. Yet even this did not stop the research. The major powers created the Cronus Mega Corporation to develop and explore the dome. Love this art. Its secrets became a lucrative business. The Spire Station was built on top of the dome to export the artifacts and import supplies and personnel. The city of Crystal Sands grew at the foot of the dome, eventually becoming a major transportation hub. All this required thousands of employees, and there was no shortage of candidates. Romantics, pragmatists, and adventurers of all trades swarmed recruiting centers around the globe, seeking jobs at Cronus. You were one of those people. In 1976, your application was approved. And you went under the dome towards the future. Whether a good one or a bad one, only time will tell. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> uh, create character. Welcome to the character creation screen, where you would create a protagonist to plunge into adventures under the dome. To begin, choose the name for your character, select the wing in which they work, their portrait, and then adjust their physical appearance. Okay. We'll be Ko. Um, oh, he do custom portraits. Hmm, he looks edgy enough. Let's be this guy. All right, edgy Ko. Make you a dude. Okay. Okay. So here, here's what I want to see in games moving forward. Here's what you do. Okay, here's what you do. First, what you do is you make your profile pictures, right? You make these. Okay, this is what you do first. Then, once you've made these, you go through and you take all of the hairstyles from the profile pictures you've made, and then you make them selectable options in the game. For the love of God, how has no company done this? I swear, it's like they, they make their hair, their hairstyles for their character, and then they go, okay, make sure none of the profile pictures use that exact hair. None of them. Zero. Yeah, or do it the other way around. Or make, put your hairstyles in the game and then make your profile pictures based off the available hairstyles. Um, but yeah, anyway, okay. I'm done, I'm done. Um, okay, I guess this, this one's the closest. It's not it, but it's the closest. So we'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. All right. Uh, hair color. Like a brown. Okay. Uh, features. Okay. This is like beard. There we go. Feature color. Let's make it brown too. The hair color and... Oh, perfect. They do match. Okay. Good on them. Good. Good. That's fine. Okay. 
Black Wing. Using the most powerful weapons and advanced military equipment, the employees of the Black Wing protect humanity from the myriad of hazards of the dome. Black Wing Command is made up of the, the best officers from the most highly trained armies in the world who coordinate their subordinates to provide maximum security. They get strength, fortitude, heavy weapons, hand-to-hand -hand melee, and piloting. Piloting? Okay, cool. Bonus is divided into wings. These five departments are engaged in different activities. Choosing a wing affects the background of your character. Okay. <laughs> that might be me, Triwar. Yeah. Is that actually a select? That's not a selectable one, is it? No, I was going to say. <laughs> that's that's later. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Okay, Orange Wing. Every person deserves a second chance, especially those willing to make amends for their crimes by working for the betterment of humanity. Okay, Orange Wing is like... Okay, like, it's almost like indentured servitude, from the sounds of it. Um, yeah, sort of. Deafness plus one. Deafness is dexterity and reaction time. Okay. They also get encumbrance, which is max carry weight. Oh my. Hey, Bauman, what's up, buddy? Good morning, Demi Wolfsong. How are you today? Criminal. This skill allows you to take other people's things and penetrate restricted areas. Oh. And survival. The ability to assess danger and avoid it. Oh, damn. This sounds... This sounds super useful. Okay, Orange Wing sounds pretty good. White Wing. It is often said that time is of, of great... It is often said that the time of great discoveries has now passed. Preposterous! Just like Galileo and Newton, White Wing employees are launching a new era of science. They represent the best minds. Science! They represent the best minds of humanity, working diligently in laboratories equipped with the most modern tech to uncover the mysteries of an ancient civilization. They get brains, which affects action points, saved action points, skill points per level, high tech weapons, medicines, tech, and science skills. Okay, that all sounds phenomenal. Uh, yes, the Nerd Wing. High tech weapons, medicine, science and biochemical resistance poisonous animals barrels of chemicals dangerous pathogens and stale sandwiches interesting blue wing dome laid dormant for centuries came only to life with the arrival of people today this region is a gigantic 30,000 square kilometer construction site with thousands of cars snow white cities and a network of motorways spanning the inhospitable desert Cronus is rightfully proud of its world-class infrastructure built from the ground up thanks to the hard work and knowledge of the employees of the Blue Wings. They're like the engineers and the workers. They get guts. Learn ability. Modifies the amount of experience gained. Oh. There's a stat for your experience gain. That's interesting. Melee weapons and contraptions. Looks like traps and just tech. Okay. And finally, Silverwing. These are the leaders. Determine the first party out of a thousand. Find experts who can suss out the best solutions to every problem. Equip workers with the right tools and ship the necessary materials where they need to go. Oh, man. Skill points per level plus two? Psionics? Dude, what is going on? No, I don't want to choose between these options. This is this is ridiculous. I want all of these. How do I pick every wing? My lord, man. Um charisma, physical attractiveness, charm and the ability to present yourself. Affects inspiration, authority, influence and medicine. So we can be the fighter, the thief, the wizard, the dwarf, or the silver tongue. Um, damn, dude. I 
think we'll go. I think we'll do silver. Let's do the silver. Let's try the silver. I'm gonna try psionics. Let's try psionic. Yeah. Each character in the game is a set of attributes, basic physical or mental characteristics. The higher the attribute value, the greater the advantage in certain situations, and the higher the initial level of secondary characteristics and skills associated with the attribute. After selecting your wing, attribute points are distributed automatically, reflecting your wing specialization, but you can redistribute them by deducting points from some attributes and investing them in others. 10 charisma, 10 psyche, 1 deafness. 3 brains? A lot of guts. I don't. I don't want this many guts. If during character creation the brain stat is set to the value of one or two, the protagonist will be incapable of meaningful dialogue. Often this leads to unexpected results. Some quests become unavailable, while others new options get unlocked. Okay. My brain. I am just smart enough to not do that. Okay. Let's, I want more brains for sure. Um. What is perception? Eye perception gives a chance to notice something hidden and evaluate the characteristics of people by looking at them. Affects action points, critical hit chance, contraptions, piloting skills, and criminal skills. Okay. Co, we know you don't speak good. You shut up. Whoa. And in case, characters have a variety of skills that reflect their prowess in specific areas, be it handling different types of weapons, applying medicine, or repairing equipment. We recommend choosing two applied and one combat skill, but you may select three skills as your tag skills. So add an additional 30 points to each tag skill. Dude, this is awesome. Whoa. This is super cool. I'm gonna do psionics. Psychokinetic side glove ability. Teleport at the target to a 15 meter radius. Hassling. Electrokinetic. Swap places with a target. Cryostasis. Immobilizes the target, but restores 25% of its health. Ignite. Doesn't deal damage. Set someone on fire and it doesn't deal damage? I don't know about this. <laughs> um, okay, this is just like a, okay, this is just like a fire. Doesn't deal damage. Strengthens the target ally. Dude, the, okay, okay. Psionics is not a combat skill. It's like a... Aw. This one does damage. I guess we should probably get that. Um, yeah, it's more like control. Yeah, apparently. Okay, let's look at applied. Influence. Wait, every one of these has a whole thing of abilities? Damn. Look at all of this. Wow. Okay. Influence. Conviction. Charm. Barter. Look at the skills from other combat stuff. And maybe high-tech weapons? Maybe I'll get high-tech weapons. I can actually do some damage. Huh. I definitely want to do influence. What about science? Heavy weapons 15, ballistic calculation. Criminal 15, hacking. Oh, dude, this is like, these skills are incredibly synergistic with other things. Interesting. Okay. Let's do psionics. And what about medicine? Oh, maybe we should get medicine. Thank you. 
Can I get, can I get survival? Survival. Allows you to strip inventory items for parts. Allows you to remove useful parts from components for certain objects. We need tech for those. Cookery? Oh, dude. Oh my god. Stop making me choose, man. This is, this is rough. Criminal for loot? Yeah, dude, I was looking at that too, but we're only three. We're gonna have to find like a criminal companion. Lock picking? Oh. <laughs> okay, let's just try this. We, we just have to pick. Oh my God, there's traits too. In creating a character, you can choose one personality trait for them. It has both pros and cons and is entirely optional. In case you create a character with low intelligence, one or more additional trait as a bag of hammers will be added automatically. Nice. Uh, higher crit chance. Incoming crit damage by 50%, but you get a bunch of skills. Ooh. Is that back-to-back VIPs -back in my chat right now? When does October start? Tomorrow. We're starting October tomorrow. Oh, get a bunch of skills, but deal a lot less damage? Okay. Um, man. When you kill someone, you experience an unusual surge of vigor, but you also fall into a delirium for a few seconds. Redneck. Guts plus four, perk rate plus one. Oh, Lord. Neanderthal. You cannot wear pants and jackets, but close quarter damage plus 13. Oh my god. Dark Lord. Thrill Seeker. Experience is 50% with health less than or equal to 35%, but you get less experience if your health is higher. Okay, that's awesome. What is precision? The success rate of remote attacks. Oh, and you can carry less. No. Intuition. No. Slowpoke. I don't know enough about this stuff to, to take it. Plus two perk points at the start of game, but minus three skill points leveling up. Servo shell. Oh, is that like power armor? Okay, I don't think I'm gonna take any of these for now. Just because I, I'm not, like I don't know enough about the game to know what's good or bad. This one is the only one that makes me kind of interested. That's like 50% extra crit damage if I'm reading this right. Bossy is good for you? No, less carry weight? Girl, you crazy? Don't worry about encumbrance. It doesn't prevent you from moving, just debuffs you a lot. Oh yeah? I'm doing penitent one. We're doing it. Oh god, I have made a huge mistake. Okay. <sighs> hey, lazy eye. It's okay, we're not playing on hard mode. Oh my god. Oh, I didn't select it? Wait. Wait, cat saying I didn't... I didn't select it. I had to confirm it. No, I did. I think yeah, I thought I did. Okay. The dome is an international project of unprecedented scale. It will go as far as to say that humanity has come all this way to get exactly where we are now. War, slavery, genocide, all of these efforts will pay off handsomely. Wait a moment, bad phrasing. Cut that bit, will you? Interacting with different characters is an important part of the game. To start a dialogue, click on the character, and if they, have, they if they are set to talk to you, a dialogue interface will show up. In conversations, you can find out valuable plot information, clues, and even receive tasks. Use your lines carefully. Careless words can cause resentment and provoke a fight. I 
A guy wearing thick spectacles thrusts out a sweaty hand. Monty James, Silverwing. Hi. He glances down at your badge. Ah, oh, it's you. I found your file extremely interesting. And your CV, wonderful. I inspiring, really. When I had the opportunity to look over the files of my future colleagues, I couldn't resist. I don't want to sound boastful, but silver level clearance has its advantages. Monty winks. What'd you see in my file? Monty makes a ring with his thumb and forefinger. Uh, you were number 63,784 on the waiting list, but you were lucky enough to get into the dome after only 16 months. Besides that, uh, zero, nada, absolutely nothing. You're a dark horse for both the Foundation and myself. Um, how exactly did you end up in this wing? I enjoy the sense of power. Oh, I see. Hmm, well, I uh, appreciate your candor. The sil An uncomfortable silence rises between you, <laughs> and Monty abruptly changes the subject. He then replies, Actually, I've seen your file. False. You wanted the money. He taps the narrow illuminator panel with one finger. Uh, look, there's a storm rising. The lightning is strange. Green. Should lightning be green? Uh, this is my first sandstorm. Since you're a silver, you would like to review the other employees' files. James spreads his arms regretfully. Ah, uh, you misunderstood. I don't carry the physical copies with me, but I did get a chance to familiarize myself with them. Ask, Ask about the white wing employee. Monty presses his plump hands to his chest as if in prayer. Tamako Kimura from Osaka, a physiologist. She's young, but already has a PhD. James moves so close, his lips are all but brushing your ear. Just between you, me, and that lamppost, Kimura has an older sister, Ayaki. She's currently in jail, and Tamako herself spent two years in prison. But that is strictly, strictly classified. What about the blue wing employee? The silver smiles and pats the blue on the shoulder. As the man turns to him, Monty raises his fist in some kind of a weird salute. Gagarin, Sputnik, Cosmos, Mir, Druzhba, Krasin, SSSR. He says in Russian. The blue's mustache twitches, and his face wrinkles with a beaming smile. Uh, Mr. Uh, no, Comrade Patanin is from the Soviet Union. He's a highly qualified construction engineer, took part in planning the spire. He's no spy, supposedly. Monty explains, turning to you. What about the Blackwing employee? Elsa Olofsson, police captain, city of Stockholm. Former captain, to be precise. Dismissed from service because of a... Conflicting article. Yeah, conflicting. Let's call it that. The silver says in hushed tones. The black gives him an unpleasant look, but says nothing. What about the orange wing employee? Uh, this is, uh... Monty adjusts his glasses and peers closely at the orange's badge. Ah, Quentin Bisley. Grand Theft Auto three times in one B&E. He was about to go down for 12 years, so he filed for the Clean Slate program. And look at that. They accepted him right away. The Silver shakes his head in disapproval and perplexity. What about you? <laughs> Sorry. Classified. <laughs> Monty laughs. He's plainly flattered by your question. Harvard. Then I worked in the economics department at Supercolor. They produced a special television model for commuter buses. Did you know that? That was my research. What else? Well, I like sports. Water aerobics is a sport, isn't it? Uh, I don't smoke and never eat after 6 p.m. And that's me now. Uh, just saying, uh, these kinds of things aren't in the file. So saying, Monty abruptly falls silent. Hi. The orange is dressed in a new jumpsuit. The shiny badge on his chest reads, Quentin Bisley, laborer. He's side-eyeing the screen skeptically. Despite his tired, grim expression, like this his gaze is open and friendly. However, the general impression is unmistakable. There's something frightening about Bisley. So how'd you end up in prison? The orange's face stretches into a broad smile. 
bearing his dentures to the world. Like everyone, duh. In a black car, under guard. There's other guys, too. The ones who go through the front door. He nods at the black-winged woman beside him. Her nose wrinkles in displeasure, but she says nothing. Ask about the bracelets on his wrist. Quentin raises his hands to examine the devices. They call them humane handcuffs. How about that? Truth is, there ain't nothing humane about them. They zap you real hard the moment you get your hands on a gun. But they sure look nice. Bisley lowers his hands again. And so that's struggles. how they control them. Interesting. So does that mean that if you pick the orange wing, then you then it's like a no guns playthrough until you get those off? A tall woman is watching an ad playing on the monitor, arms crossed. The polished to a shine badge on her black overalls reads Elsa Olafson Security Service. She glances at you and offers her hand in a businesslike manner. Greetings. Please take all necessary precautions. By that I mean don't turn your back on him. Elsa nods at the orange. There's no need to keep the orange handcuffed. Elsa's eyes spark angrily. Are you saying you will take full responsibility for the possible consequences of that order? Was that a nod? Does that mean yes? Barter or bribe? Interesting. Olafson turns to the orange, produces a key, <laughs> and unlocks his cuffs in a smooth, well-practiced motion. Uh-oh. So dangerous about this orange. Olafson eyes your silvery jumpsuit and snorts. Really? I thought you'd be the one to tell me about it. After all, your department has access to all the orders and personal files. Her gaze shifts to the silver standing opposite and then back to you before she turns indignantly to the window. You're welcome. Bisley is bopping his head from side to side, as if in time with a melody only he can hear. Uh, what? He asks, continuing to shake his You're head. welcome for taking off your handcuffs, Dingle. A man with a mustache and a blue jumpsuit is standing at the window, studying the construction site below through the occasional break in the clouds. His badge reads, Igor Patan, Planner. The blue taps on the glass with one finger and gestures you to come and take a look. Seems like he doesn't speak English. Talk to Patanen. Using sign language, mimicry, and all of your artistic talent, you're able to communicate with the planner. Once he's sure you're watching, Patanen points up cool. in the direction I of stash? Spire I know, right? Station, we call that the Sakusha. From which you departed a few minutes ago. He sketches the outline of the station on a broad, foggy section of glass. Once he's finished, the blue turns to you with a delighted expression. Ask him about the station's dimensions. The blue begins to mark up his diagram with a series of footnotes and numbers. Turns out the station's ring diameter is a bit more than 1,500 meters. Its height above the dome is 317 meters. And the total height of the spire, including the loading docks, is nearly 720 meters. Wow. How's it function? With a series of confident strokes, the planner delineates the capsule's movement scheme, drive train, and massive hydraulic brakes on the glass. What's the purpose? This time, Igor is quite laconic. He pauses, then confidently writes cargo and personnel in block letters and draws an arrow cool. pointing So we're going down that spire right now from the top to the very bottom. Beside it, he writes relics and draws an arrow pointing up. I His do like relics. turned back to front. Thank you. The engineer stops you with a gesture and after rummaging through his pockets, offers you a small candy. There is a picture of a crayfish on the white wrapper. Is this candy crayfish flavored? Thank him and put the candy in your mouth. It's surprisingly spongy and tooth achingly sweet. You can only wonder what it has to do with crayfish. <laughs> what is this? Crayfish candy. Yum, yum. <laughs> Dude, this is great so far. I'm digging it.